What's going on guys? Alex from The Game Changers here. Today I want to talk about Nintendo. In recent months there's been some up and down situations and to me right now and to many of you out there, they're not looking so good. They've been doing some things that seem very anti-Nintendo community, very anti-hardcore fan. So let me explain what I'm talking about because this is really important. Um, so if we look at different situations, such as the Mario 3D All-Stars game being void of extra content that celebrates the life of the games that were on the card, no GameCube support, no, there's a music track for each game, but that's basically it. It's the games and very little else, very little else. And for $50, it just seemed very bare bones and very lazy on Nintendo's part. But as hardcore fans, we're going to eat it up anyway because that's what we do. And we love Nintendo at the end of the day, even when they do stuff like that. But that's not the biggest story. The Smash Bros. community has been affected in a way that has created a trending hashtag called Free Melee. And I'm all about this. I'm a huge Super Smash Bros. Melee fan. And I've been playing since I was about 13 when that game came out. So. I feel for what's going on there. In addition to that, we're going to talk about the Eticons, the Etika themed custom Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons that were made by Captain Alex. It seems like that story is blowing up. Looking at this Super Mario 3D All-Stars game, it is a collection of three beloved Mario games. It's got Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and the first Mario Odyssey game. All are absolutely wonderful games. I've played through each one of them multiple times myself. My son's played through all three of them, and we love them. But when we heard that it was going to be on the Switch, we kind of hoped for a little bit more than we got. And for $50, it just didn't seem like much value. Why not celebrate some artwork of Mario 64? Why not give some testimonials or interviews, or any kind of extra content relating to Mario 64, which is, you know, quite an old game at this point. Why not include some extras to celebrate Super Mario Sunshine, which was a divisive, admittedly, game, but it was beloved in its own way. So why not give some extra options to celebrate why that game was as great as it was? And to continue with that, you couldn't play with a GameCube controller, even though you can play with Smash Bros. Ultimate. You can do that, and you can play the GameCube controller with a few other games. But Nintendo did not release the option to play with a GameCube controller until quite a bit later. And it seems so unreasonable that they would do that. There was also an issue with control options. You couldn't configure any um, serious controls to change things up which is really common in most games nowadays. It just seemed so bare bones. The options was just so short. There was nothing to do other than play the games, which I guess is fine, but why not just dig out our hard hardware and play it on an original TV? What I'm saying is with Super Mario 3D All-Stars, they could have made it a shining example of celebrating the fandom of Mario and they didn't really do that it really was a bare bones experience and as beloved as those games are you kind of can't help but feel like they dropped the ball a little bit if you look at other like anniversary collections you'll see a lot of content um Sony's done a better job Capcom's done a better job um it's endless. There's so many of these, and it's just really a bummer. If you look at the Kirby collection on the Wii, that was beautiful. There was some really cool animation in the beginning. It's a really cool collection, and I absolutely love it, but this was not that. So, at the end of the day, they could have done a lot better, and that just seems a bit lazy, but not the most damning on their part. So, what's more damning is what they seem to have done to the Smash Bros. Melee community, which I'm a big fan of. 
I absolutely love Smash Bros. Melee. I've won a couple tournaments in the past, and my brother and I used to play it every day when it came out, and for years after that. We went to um, Hollywood Video, which was still a thing back then, and played it a game crazy, and I won a tournament there. It was amazing. It was I'm, They made it such a great experience, and I just love that game to this very day, and I still play every iteration after that. But what happened is this tournament that they uh, held for Smash Bros. Melee, they wanted to use a way to play online uh, due to COVID and due to a lot of other restrictions going on. So they implemented this system, and Nintendo really didn't like that because Smash Bros. Melee was never meant to play online. It was on the GameCube, and there was very few games that ever went online. Fantasy Star Online 1 and 2 did, but not very many others did. So Nintendo shut this tournament down, and there's been a trending hashtag called Free Melee going on, and it's got its own set of drama. And we really hope that Nintendo will look at the feedback on this and maybe make some better or different decisions in the future. Nintendo has absolutely every right to do whatever they want with their intellectual property, which is all of their characters, all of their logos, everything from like the color palette they use. They have full right to do whatever they want with their intellectual property. That is absolutely true and that will never change. But with the massive community that Nintendo has as fandom, they should accept some of the, you know, fan art and the community-based engagement that will give them free advertising. We're, if we feel that Nintendo cares about what we do as fans, then who's to say that wouldn't boost their, you know, income? But at the same time, anytime you see Mario's face, you know, the Nintendo 64 logo, just to give a few examples, anything related to Star Fox or Pokemon, you know, all of these things, it's still hyping Nintendo up. And anyone who buys this fan art is also, I gotta guess, going to buy the official releases by Nintendo. It seems like Nintendo would highly benefit from embracing its fandom and raising fan morale by supporting what fans are doing to a point, of course, because they still ought to protect what they own. But if the vibe is that they're supportive of their fan base, I think the outcome would be very positive. Moving on, though, we're going to talk about these Etika themed Joy Cons that were custom made by Captain Alex. He had raised around $37,000 for charity, and around 10000 of that went to charity. But Nintendo issued a CND, or a cease and desist, to Captain Alex, and he, it seems uh, today or last night, released that information to show kind of the growing number of people who are asking about it, what that looked like, and what had happened. So he elaborated on kind of the drama that he went through privately. So now it seems things are just blowing up. This situation has become a trending topic. There's probably dozens of YouTube videos about it. I've seen many articles written about this already, but um, I wanted to mention something about it because Captain Alex is our friend and I remember seeing these Attica themed Joy-Cons and they looked fantastic and I believed in what Captain Alex was doing. I thought it was really honorable and um, he was remembering Etika in a very positive way, but Nintendo did not see it that way. What Nintendo saw is Captain Alex infringing on their copyright, using multiple things from Joy-Con images to just a few listed items that are on this cease and desist letter. So, as a community, it seems that is just not appearing too well. To fans. It looks a little ugly and you can see right now trending that um, fans all over the world have an opinion about this so I wanted to share mine. Uh, we loved Etika 
He was a great person to meet. We had the pleasure to meet him at an anime convention in Chicago. We were still doing endless custom amiibo, and he came running up to our booth, and we took a picture together that's probably still on our Facebook banner, but it was an experience I'll remember for the rest of my life. He was such a great guy, and we we miss him. I showed him all the things that I'd made, and we had the genuine pleasure of making him a female Red Robin, which he always hyped about on his YouTube videos, which I'm so thankful that those videos are archived because the first one he made about us literally changed my life. And that is not putting it lightly. Um, when we were on the shop that we were on, we got so many orders that it took me one year to finish them, even with like a team of people. That's how powerful his community was, that he had built and all behind Nintendo and video games as a whole. He was a Nintendo fan. And um, to see someone give back the way Captain Alex did to an organization that promoted mental health, it really was a nice thing to do. But Nintendo stepped in and issued a C&D or a cease and desist demanding that he shuts the whole project down. And with the threat of a lawsuit of $150,000. So I think what Captain Alex was doing is honorable, but I also understand Nintendo's point of view at the end of the day, as upset as many of us are, it is their intellectual property. They can do anything they want with it. They could literally just kill it off in a day if they so felt like it, but they can claim on anything that they so choose because it's theirs. And at the end of the day, we have no rights to it. But as fans, we want to celebrate what they've built because we love it. And that's the biggest point I want to make is we love what Nintendo does and we're going to continue to support them. But these things that they've been doing between having, you know, a crap video game collection to celebrate three of the best Mario games ever made the Smash Bros. Melee community being treated the way that they were treated, and then with this Eticons situation is just another example, and there will be others, um, but it just doesn't show that Nintendo really loves its fans the way they, they ought to, because we love Nintendo and will always support whatever they do, even when they don't, you know, give us their best, which... You know, they're a company at the end of the day. They're not, you know, Santa giving us presents. But they have, in the past, presented themselves as a way to show that they are family-friendly and they're community-driven. But in recent years, they have kind of upended our opinions on that in some ways. So there are other examples of this, for sure, and there will be more in the future. But I hope this was useful information it was fun to just kind of talk about. Guys, if you'd like to see more talks like this, this isn't something I normally do, but if you'd like to see more, subscribe. And we did launch a new website. If you guys want to take a look, um, it's called tgccustoms.com. We're going to be using that from now on. And uh, if you guys get a chance, take a look. If you don't, that's cool too. Until next time, I'm Alex with the Game Changers. Have a good night.